<laughs> well, hello again. Fancy meeting you here. So, as I go through my patented and copyrighted review process, aka just using the phone daily, I've been diddling the S10 Plus for a bit now, deep diving into the settings, harassing it like an ex that just doesn't know when to quit, and I think I've finally got something magical here. So follow me on this adventure, will you, as I show you how I set up my Galaxy S10 Plus. What am I doing with myself? Right, so before we deep dive into the settings, I just wanted to show you the look and feel I was going for this time, because the new S10 devices have insane displays. They're brighter than before, and they've got better color gamuts than ever. So I kind of wanted to show that off here using what I think is a really nice mix of black, you know, deep colors and functional simplicity that of course, I'll go over near the end in case you guys wanted a similar look, which was really easy to make. Okie dokie, with that out of the way, this time around, first thing I did was go to the drop down shade, tap the arrow next to the brightness slider, make sure adaptive brightness is disabled, and then enable show control on top because I'm a simple guy who enjoys one swipe to get to the brightness slider instead of two, but at the same time, it's kind of pointless and you'll see why as I go through some of the other settings, so just keep that in the back of your mind. Next, I like to trim down all those bloody quick toggles enabled by default because it's like scrolling through a goddamn Rolodex. So just tap on the three dot menu, tap on button order and trim it down till you're satisfied. Obviously, everyone's needs are different, but here's mine. After that, I just kind of go down the menu list. So with button grid, I just left it at default, but with status bar, I enable show all notifications and show battery percentage because I like to know what the hell's going on, which I don't think is unreasonable. Next, I go over the settings like a red-headed stepchild in an orphanage. First off, I jump into sounds and vibration, which kind of sounds like a shitty 90s R&B group. Anyways, I enable use volume keys for media because I adjust media volume more often than ringtone volume. I mean, who, who the hell even gets calls anymore? Everyone's like, M me? <laughs> Then I pop into system sounds and vibration, which sounds a lot less like a 90s R&B group, and make sure to disable anything that'll annoy me and anyone around me because I'm not a shitty human being. But I leave on vibrations because I mean, who doesn't like some cool vibrations? And then in advanced settings, I turn on Dolby Atmos for now, only for review purposes, so I don't know if I'll be keeping it on or not later. In notifications, I just make sure app icon badges is turned off. I know a lot of people like icon badges, but they annoy me. Now, jumping into display settings, adaptive brightness is turned off from before. Uh, I don't use the blue light filter, and even though Samsung's One UI comes with a pretty great dark mode, which is awesome to see included now, by the way, some of the color choices aren't quite my jam. So I'm not using that either. Instead, I'll be using something else, which we'll get to. Under screen mode, there's only two options, but I went with vivid because I really like that extra punch. Natural tones down the color saturation quite a bit more than I prefer with smartphone displays. So yeah. I always change the screen resolution to its max, which in this case is 3040 by 1440. It's awesome. In home screen, I leave the layout and grids alone and disable everything except for quick open notification panel. Now, remember when I said setting the screen brightness slider on top was pointless? This is why, because this lets you just swipe down twice to get to the brightness slider. So even with that setting disabled, with this setting, you can just swipe down twice and adjust the brightness slider without breaking your hand or using two hands for that matter. <laughs> um, under edge screen, I always disable edge panels because they just get in my way, clutter up the screen, and in the end are completely useless to me and my needs. Edge lighting, however, I leave on though, because that's just fun. Under navigation bar, I've actually been testing out the gestures, but they're all swipe up gestures, which has caused numerous throat punch worthy unintended scrolling actions. So for now, I'm sticking with the buttons and then everything else is left at default. Under lock screen, of course, fingerprint is enabled, but I didn't register my face because I need to use a fingerprint scanner for review purposes. And I don't like facial recognition anyways. And I promise it has nothing to do with the tinfoil hat I have hanging in my closet. Should probably throw that out. Smart lock, I leave alone. Secure lock settings, I like the default options already there, so I leave that alone too. Always on display, I turn on and set to show always. Screen orientation to portrait, enable show music information and enable auto brightness so I don't give myself early onset cataracts whenever I wake up at night and go to glance at my phone. In face widgets, I just have music and weather enabled and then enable show on, always on display. Notifications, I have enabled and then go into app shortcuts and disable the phone and camera 
camera icons for a cleaner looking lock screen seeing as you need to unlock the phone to use the dialer anyways and I can quick access the camera with the double press of the power button. Now in biometrics and security, like I already explained, I'm not using facial recognition, but with fingerprints, I usually register my thumb and index finger for when I'm either holding it or when it's on a surface as flat as my ass. Everything else, I leave alone. Golly gee willikers, Batman. Vance features sure does sound like a whole lot of hooey. That's because most of it is. <laughs> no, but seriously, that's totally subjective. Use what you need, right? So I have Bixby routines disabled, but I have set the Bixby button to launch Google Assistant. Sort of. See, you can set up the Bixby key to launch any app except for third-party smart assistants, but the fine folks over at XDA Developers created a tasker script and then exported it uh, as an APK file. So all you have to do is download it and follow the instructions on the XDA page, which I'll link to in the description, and you'll have Google Assistant up and running in like under a minute. It's pretty sweet, super easy. So anyways, long story short, that's how I have the Bixby key set up. <laughs> uh, in smart pop-up view, I have everything disabled because the pop-ups seem to be persistent pop-ups, kind of like a weird wrap they don't just go away on their own. You actually got to deal with it, which is super annoying. Anyways, smart capture is enabled and direct share is disabled because the standard share menu options work just fine for me. Uh, reduce animation is enabled and seems good enough that I haven't felt the need to dip into developer options to reduce animations manually. So that's a nice little kiss on the cheek from Samsung. Much appreciated. Motion and gestures. All I have enabled is lift to wake, double tap to wake, and one handed mode. Boom, done. Game launch is disabled because meh. And I have video enhancer disabled because I don't like how it cranks up the brightness whenever I launch a video app like YouTube. It drives me nuts. All right, digital well being is something I don't even bother with. In device care, however, I like to jump into battery settings to see what we get. In this case, I left it on optimized, which is default. It's been great for me, and I think should be fine for pretty much everyone, but I do disable adaptive power saving because what I'm looking for is consistency. What I'm not looking for is the phone to be all, surprise, bitch, I just disabled location, crippled CPU performance, and limited the number of background tasks. Have fun. Alrighty, now I know you're all just chomping at the bit to learn how to get your S10 looking as sleek and sexy as mine. Everyone's like, nope, not, not really. Well, I'm gonna show you anyways. <laughs> First thing I did was download Nova Launcher for some further customizations, but mainly so I can pick my own icon pack. Uh, Samsung's theme app has a lot of icon packs, but they only cover native apps, not apps from the Play Store, which I think makes a home screen look kinda ugly. So I wanted a simplistic but colorful icon pack to take advantage of the S10's awesome display, so I went with the Material Things icon pack from the Play Store. It costs like a buck or two, but it supports a shit ton of icons. Um, I really like the look, and the icon search function is really easy to use. Then I went into Nova Launcher settings and made some small tweaks, but they're really more about personal preference than anything. Thing. But basically, in home screen, I set the desktop grid to 6x6, six six. I turn icon labels off, then in look and feel, I set up the icon pack and then back out of the settings and go into the home screen and set up some folders with the apps I use most. Then I turn those folders into hidden folders. Now, I believe this feature is only available with Nova Prime, which is sort of like a paid key to unlock the rest of the features. Anyways, I long press on the folder, tap on edit, enable swipe to open folder, and then in swipe action, I select first item in folder. This way, if for instance, I wanna quickly open Twitter, all I have to do is tap on the folder. And if I wanna get into the folder to launch Instagram, for instance, I swipe up and the folder opens. Now, just a quick tip, most of the time the folder icon will be whatever the first item in your folder is, but you can always change it by long pressing the folder, tapping edit, then tapping on the folder icon and selecting your icon pack of choice. Anyways, with hidden folders, I think it just creates a cleaner looking home screen. Uh, now for the last step, I wanted to pick a wallpaper that goes with the icons. Sometimes I start with the wallpaper I like and then look for an icon pack that complements the wallpaper, but this time I did it in reverse. So for wallpapers, lately I've really been digging this app called AMOLED Walls. This is one of my secret favorite wallpaper apps, so shh, don't tell anyone. This app has a metric shit ton of wicked looking wallpapers. They're dark but colorful and they're fun and they're specifically designed for devices with AMOLED displays. Anyways, this one's called Blue Cone. It doesn't hide the hole punch but instead embraces it and I think it complements the icon pack while showing off the color vibrancy of this rad display. 
but I do have a bunch of other wallpapers I favorited that I really dig in case I did want to tuck the little hole punch away and save it for later. All right, we're almost done. Next step is downloading a nice dark theme from the Samsung theme app. So I wanted something dark, but I found that even though there's a lot of dark themes available, I didn't like the extra colors they use for things like the dialer or messaging app, settings menu icon, stuff like that. So after spending hours looking through more themes than I'm willing to admit to, I settled on one called Black UI, but black is spelled without the K, because apparently you don't have to be literate to design themes. Anyways, it's got a nice deep blue color for the various UI elements and it's free, which made it extremely attractive to me. But yeah, I just downloaded it, applied it, and it looks great, but there's just one more bonus element I forgot customizing the always on display. So back into the Samsung theme app I went. Again, hundreds, maybe even thousands of options. And I found a bunch that I liked and downloaded, but then I found one that really caught my eye and I just had to have it, even though it doesn't tie into the theme even a little bit. But once I had it, I knew my setup was complete. So there you have it. That's how I set up my Galaxy S10 Plus. I'll try my best to include links for everything in the description. I did wanna mention though that some of the steps while setting up the device settings aren't really necessary if you're gonna follow through by installing Nova Launcher, but I wanted to include them anyway so that you can still take advantage of the convenience of those specific settings. Anyways, that's it for this one. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram where from time to time I'll post some of my favorite wallpapers and where to get them. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and found it helpful or at least entertaining. If you did, show me some love with that like button and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on new videos. But thanks as always for watching and I'll talk to you all in the next one. Cheers!